It's a sprint to the finish of a wild weekend here in Russia, a sprint to get back to Germany and continue the World Cup away from five weeks of travel in China and Russia. And yes, it's the BMW sprint, the opening sprint competition of this season on the Eberspecha Luge World Cup Tour. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tim Singer. Here's a look at the conditions. Continues to get warmer. It's been that way in each of the last two weekends of racing. 48 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity rising now 87 percent. And here is a look at this track from top to bottom. We'll get you that sneak peek in a moment of the actual run. But here are the specs on what's a slightly different format in this sprint race. To tell us a little bit more about the format and give us a ride from top to bottom is a woman who won an Olympic medal on this track and is the 2017 World Sprint Champion, Erin Hamlin. Welcome back, Erin. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, this is a unique race because the athletes will be navigating the same track that you're seeing is from men's start here, but the it's like a flying start in sprinting. They don't get, the time doesn't start. It didn't look like until around the exit of this corner right here, curve five. Um, it happens to be one of the trickier spots in the track as well. So you see that arm that reached over the athlete right there. That's where the time will start. And then this middle section of the track that flattens out, goes a bit uphill, will be really important to be mistake-free so that when they hit the faster, more high-speed bottom of the track, they can just fly. Um, starts aren't as huge of a factor here because of the flying star. Every athlete has the ability to kind of get that momentum going um, so the splits start a little bit later but the bottom of the track is still going to be crucial here it's high speeds aerodynamics are going to be huge and then they'll cross the finish line and hopefully uh, have a fast time the 15 men then doubles then women in today's sprint competition qualified by virtue of being the top 15 in their respective world cup two run races held yesterday and earlier this morning and it is a sprint not just with the format, but we sprint along with our coverage. There's very little time between sleds. So you will see after Jonas Mueller finishes, in a matter of seconds later, Johnny Gustafson of the USA will start down the track. So here we go. Mueller will lead ahead of an American, and actually Aaron yesterday finished just ahead of another American. Tucker West finished behind Jonas Mueller by a mere thousandths of seconds to miss out on this competition. But Jonas is good at this craft, and like you, he is a world champion in the sprint event. Yeah, it's an interesting format, and we've learned over the years it is really new still, um, that it kind of eliminates as much of a gap that the fast starters get at the very beginning. So these first corners is just trying to make zero mistakes, just go as gain as much speed as you can. Um, you'll see the in the bottom of the screen, the, the speed time that'll show you how much speed each athlete will have as they get into when the clock starts. So athletes that gain time at the bottom are going to have a bit of an advantage because that's where the bulk of the, the time is going to be counting. Start speed was 62 miles per hour. If this is anything like the World Cup races, and it's somewhat like them, we may see 83, 84 miles per hour down here at the bottom. 86 and a half miles per hour. The adventure saved until after he crosses the finish line. So a 34.955 is that time. And what we didn't allude to, though, is you see the red light turn green. Where that's somewhere around curve four. Okay, sometimes it's really hard to see, even from the athlete's perspective. You don't need to know, do you? <laughs> Here's Johnny Gustafson from the United States, Messina, New York. And he is on a borrowed sled, as he has been for two weeks. It's a sled owned by a former World Cup winner, Stefan Fedorov of Russia. A big athlete like Johnny, although Stefan's a little wider than Johnny. Yeah, that's another interesting point we didn't really touch on yesterday. You know, every sled is set up for their unique individual athlete, but size-wise, if you can't find an athlete who is similar in size to you, um, they're all very specific to how big you are, and it's important that you have a good fitting sled. So that's a whole other element to having, to not having your own equipment. Johnny, the only American to qualify for today's race, as the aforementioned Tucker West just missed out. Chris Mazder did not 
finish in the top 15, although we will see Chris in a few moments in the doubles competition. He's put together a pretty good run. He just had a couple quick corrections there between curve 15 and 16. Second place. Cost him. Second place with 13 remaining. And what's also interesting, the terminology we're so used to, and we're talking about podium positions coming late in the race because it's based on the first run. But with this being a single heat race, the winner really can come from anywhere and as likely might come from the, the top of the order. Yeah, exactly. Here is Mr. Sprint, Kevin Fishnaller. His lone World Cup victory was in the sprint. He was in the top five in every sprint last season, which gave him the overall season's championship. That was one of the unique stories of last season. Yeah, Kevin is known for his great driving ability down the track and not always for a strong start. So this race is really very, suits him very well. Hey, while you're watching around the world, live coverage on Olympic Channel, by all means, send us your questions and your comments. We didn't have time in the second run of women's, but we will have time in between heats here in the sprint competition to interact with you. So we look forward. At Luge Announcer is our Twitter handle, luge.announcer, gmail for the email. Cross in second place ahead of the American, behind the Austrian. Jonas looked pretty solid, so even with there being only 15 cents, I think from the last spot he could have a, or from the first spot, last qualifying in, he could have a chance to stick that, stick around in that leader's position for a while. We've seen athletes actually come from start number one and win this. I, I recall, I think it was Pavlichenka did that in Lillehammer three or four years ago. As Alexander Gorbatsevich is on course, and Aaron, you've talked to the athletes a lot, so you may know the answer to this. I give you a 70% chance of knowing. Uh, do they use these sprint races at all in determining Olympic qualification, or are they just thrown out the window? I don't think on paper they do. Obviously, it's, you know, a result. But um, all of, as far as I know, most, they all are just normal World Cup, full World Cups, especially for the official, like, IOC qualification. This is definitely not included. Only Olympic events are included in qualification processes. Gorbatsevic found the green midway through. We'll see how much he extends on that lead. Great speed, 34.913, as he has a speed of 87 miles per hour and takes over the lead four sleds in. Already on course, Pavel Repilov, the first of two brothers in today's event, his world champion brother, Roman, coming up a little later on. And uh, you alluded to this, uh, mentioning that, as we see the red turn green there, this is not an Olympic discipline. Former president of the FIL, Josef Fent, lobbied to make that happen. But it would seem at this point now, Aaron, it's more likely that the new World Cup discipline of women's doubles would get the call before sprint. Absolutely. You know, women's doubles has been in the conversation for a while, and I think it's an important one for the IOC just because it gives women the same race options as the men because in the doubles category, um, it's generally just men. Women can enter the race, but it's men's doubles. So um, that would be the one that's going to get the focus before the sprint. The second of four Russians out of the 15 sled field in today's race has made it down in third place. His teammate Alexander Gorbatsevich has the lead. Now Nico Glacia. He's in search of his first Olympics. And Nico has one victory on the World Cup. I believe that also was in a sprint event. So that's kind of cool. That's one thing. You can say really nice about this, and you, you mentioned it early. It does even the playing field. And Aaron, I'm looking at the list. Nico, Kevin Fishnaller, Emily. Was Emily's victory in a, uh, in a sprint? 
she has won a sprint actually yeah that's yeah. right and yeah. then the the big one was the first year it was in world championships when martina coker the swiss athlete uh, that was won world championships that was incredible and then the next year when you won the world she finished second yeah so she yeah certain athletes can really adapt to this format oh, got away with a big mistake there he had a quick bump on the, the curve 16 that could have cost a lot Alexander Gorbatsevich still out in front as Nico Gleisha. There's a bit of a frown on his face. His teammate Wolfie Kindle still to come a little later on. Two Latvians in today's sprint event, and here's the youth Olympic gold medalist, Jintz Persians. 19 years old, he captured gold in San Moritz as part of the La Salle Youth Olympic Games in 2020. Was it you saying this yesterday that you wish they had had Youth Olympics when you were a youth? Yeah, that would have been really fun just to have kind of that elevated race experience at a young age. Obviously, it's not the same as an actual Olympics, but it's still really cool. The format's very similar. And it has begat some great champions on the senior level. Madeline Agla, a youth Olympic medalist, now a World Cup winner. Aparyota Christers, now a World Cup winner. 34.971, third place, a good solid run for Jens Bergens. It's Russia over Austria and Latvia, six sleds in. Well, there's a quick look at the replay, but if you were listening closely already on course, Roman Rapilov, a two-time junior world champion, a two-time senior world champion. A couple of years ago, Aaron, we would have maybe pegged him on the short list of favorites for the upcoming Olympic Games, although he hasn't quite been as dominating the past year or so. No, he hasn't, and I'm a little bit surprised by that. He was, seemed to be on uh, quite the accelerated path to success, but... I don't count them out yet. I think a lot, oftentimes um, athletes are trying out new equipment. Um, they may have some new equipment they have to get used to. So I think uh, he's definitely one to keep an eye on still. Five thousandths of a second up. And one of the big questions, as it has been for two weeks here, is how long will the track be able to handle these sleds? 45 sleds all told in the sprint. Well, there's one answer, a track record, 34.872. That's a relative track record to the few sprint events that have been held here. Nonetheless, a first place time for Rapilov. Yeah, and I think the format of only 15 athletes is going to keep the impact of the track, you know, getting worse and worse, a little bit less because, you know, the, they're only 15, so there's not going to be, it's half the field. Totally, and not just 15, but going off really quickly, as you see Max Langenhan already on ice. Max is sort of the Roman Rapilov three years later because he's still young. He started on the World Cup last year and he already has a victory and is ranked third in the World Cup standings. Yeah, he's done a really great job of kind of stepping up at this higher level out of the junior circuit. He's sliding really great. He looks really, really good on the sled. Driving good lines, and I can't imagine. I know this is still a relatively new track, and the juniors probably don't come here super often, so hasn't had a ton of experience here. It's a long way to travel to come and train in Russia, although that's exactly what the USA team did in the preseason. It's a fun track. Langenhan just behind Rapilov in second place. Russia, Germany, Russia, Austria, and Latvia, the top five with still six to come. Action continuing with two-time Olympic gold medalist Felix Locke, who also has two additional gold medals as part of Team Relay. And two of those four golds were here in Sochi in 2014. He actually had a big mistake in that early curve. You saw him kind of not take a smooth line, and that's going to cost a decent amount of time here, except he still has the fastest start speed, so what do I know? <laughs> well, it's interesting, and, and as you say, and as everyone says, sometimes a mistake in one curve 
you don't notice it on the clock until four or five curves further down. Yeah, that is true. Well, it's close. It sounded like a little skid there, although I didn't see anything. You see right there, I hung on that corner and it causes you to slap off and that's risky. That can sometimes catch an edge and be big problems. Only six hundredths back, but three positions down in fourth place for Felix Locke, who remember won nine out of 12 races last season. He's still looking for victory number one this year. That was a good shot of that slap off that I was kind of referring to when you kind of land hard on that shoulder. He is an experienced athlete, so handled it well, but that could have been pretty, pretty bad. Well, everyone I speak to is so thrilled to see Wolfgang Kindle seemingly back in top form, which he hasn't been over the last couple of years. Wolfie had a fifth place finish last year, or uh, yesterday rather, in the men's singles. He is the 2017 World Luge Champion. And this one will be a good um, example of what I was talking about by it kind of eliminating the start, I guess, because he had one of the slowest 10th place start speed, but a couple of splits later, he actually was in the green. So 6,000s we'll back at that last one. He could turn green, as you just mentioned. Good speed, excellent speed. He stays a hundredth of a second back. It's so tight. 400 separating one through four. Kindle matches Rapilov speed of 87.2 miles per hour. And another solid run from Kindle. So like you said, I think it's looking like he's back and we'll see if he can keep that going through February. Now 2015 world champion, Zaman Pavlichenka. He tends to be a little more relaxed in this sprint competition. I mean, we all know about fly or die Zaman Pavlichenka, but in the sprint, maybe with not as much as stake in his mind, he seems to always lay down a quick run. Maybe there's that less pressure of having to put two runs together, so you can just let it go. Still, it's, it's the same full World Cup points. That, that does add pressure to some. That's true. It's it, When they first came out with the race and that was the situation, it was brutal because if you didn't make that top 15, you had a bad race, you were 16th like a Tucker West, you get zero points yeah. on your overall Ca point scale. Capitalism, luge style, the rich get richer. Wow, eighth place. And Rapilov, his teammate, continues to hold on. Roman looking for his first victory of the season. We've got three remaining, all three good ones. Fischnaller, Ludwig, and Apariotz. And here's Dominic. The Italian had the lead after one run yesterday and then fell back two spots but stayed on the podium. He's a six-time World Cup winner, and he is on a sled borrowed by his teammate, borrowed from his teammate, Leon Felderer. Again, not one of the fastest start speeds, but that doesn't always mean he won't make it up. One thousandth of a second is his advantage over Rapilov at that last split time. The trend turns into red here, but now back into green. So that bodes well for the Italian. It doesn't. He's looking really great, like he did yesterday. Just no more movement on the sled. Really solid lines. Good position. Up and down in the finish curve, but he does have a track record. So it's a podium weekend for the athlete from South Tyrol, Dominic Fischnaller, and a fist pump. Can't imagine what he's gonna do with his own sled when he returns back to Germany and his home track in Innsbruck. Yeah, it'll be interesting. That's now, gotta feel good though after a frustrating two weeks. Now Johannes Ludwig coming off of a second place finish in the World Cup yesterday. And Aaron, as you know, that second was his worst showing of the season. Yeah, he's really come out strong this year and a great time to do so, have it, having it being Olympic year. Hopefully the momentum continues and it's not uh, 
all his speed too early. A little bit of a shaky line there, a little skidding off of, I think it was lost what curve it was, but not as solid as we've seen him. Fischnaller was sizzling fast down at the bottom. Let's see if Ludwig can go from red to green as Dominic did. So far, 300s back. Split times are so tight in this sprint format. Yeah, and he's have, having a couple mistakes here and there, just not clean enough, definitely not as clean as Dominic. It'll be the first time this season that Ludwig is off of the podium. Fischnaller now one sled away from his seventh all-time World Cup win. Yeah, just a little drift there, a little too close. You're just covering more meters of ice, which is going to cost more time. Now the man of the hour, the family of the weekend, the nation of the weekend, Latvia. Christos Zapriots yesterday became the first Latvian man ever to win a singles men's luge World Cup race. The doubles team was on the podium. Christos' sister earlier today was on the podium in second place. Can he make it back to back? I think he can. He's sliding really strong. He's looking great so far. And this is another athlete who maybe not be known for his fast starts, but knows how to find speed at the bottom. A hundredth of a second in back of Fischnaller. It'll be the veteran Italian or the still young Latvian winning gold here in Sochi. Here's Cutting the finish curve. Close. And he loses all sorts of time down at the bottom. So Dominic Fischnaller of Italy captures gold and it is not a repeat podium for Christos Zapragiotz. He had a couple mistakes there at the bottom. He looked like he had to correct pretty hard into the finish curve in order to uh, have a clean line and that clearly just took that speed right away. It's Italy over Russia and Austria and Aaron for the first time this season Germany is shut off of the podium in a World Cup race which if nothing else tells you all you need to know about the sprint as you mentioned opening the door for all of the other countries definitely we've seen that before where there's been a lot of more variety on the podium which is, makes it pretty exciting and such close racing that you can just like um, happened there Apriodes went from contending for the lead to back to eighth place so we'll look at the top 15 as we'll set the table for the for the doubles. Our congratulations to Dominic Fischneller. Long time in coming. He, as I mentioned, is now a seven-time World Cup winner, but I believe it's been a couple of seasons since he's been at the top of the podium. And really quite some time since Wolfgang Kindl has been regularly showing up on the podium as well. Uh, it's going to be such a fun Olympics, Aaron, because it's so wide open. It really is, and we said that about the last games as well because it is a new track and there are a couple spots that kind of are a gamble for everybody, um, but I think it's even more so now because there's such limited training um, in Beijing. Computers are working feverishly to tabulate the updated World Cup standings, so we will wait alongside you on those. And... Of course, Johannes Ludwig had the lead entering this race with the two first and a second. He finishes in sixth today. Got to believe he'll still hang on, but we'll know in a second. He does ahead of Felix Locke. Rapilov now moves into the top three ahead of Langenhahn, and Dominic Fischnaller making his move. Two years ago, he finished just a few points out of the top spot. This is a victory for Fischnaller. A look at all of the top finishers, combined points from the two run races and today's opening sprint.